Hi, in this video I'm going to have a look at a film scanner, an Epson V850. That's the top of the range film scanner from Epson. And in this video I'm just going to give an introduction to the actual thing itself, what it does, what you can do with it, what you get with it, with the V850, and how you might use it. Now I'm going to be doing some more videos in actually looking at some scans of film and slides and how I might process those images and other things. But what I would say up front is that I have a very detailed written review that goes into lots of detail how to use the scanner, how to set it up, how to use all the different settings and everything. Far more complex stuff than I can easily cover in a, in a short video. So this is really about the scanner. What do you get? Well, it's a USB scanner. There's no wireless, no Ethernet, no nothing else on it. It's good old fashioned USB, although it's, um, I don't think it's particularly fast, but I never noticed any problems with it. It's a transparency scanner and a reflective scanner. It has different resolutions available for different types of scanning, which means you can scan flat prints, you can scan film, you can scan transparencies. The basic device itself, interestingly enough, has the power supply in a separate power supply. Plugs in the back here. You need to plug the top section into the bottom section as well because there is a moving light source in the top section for transparency scanning. And when you set it up, I did ask originally why there was an external power supply for it. It's very simple. It keeps the heat from the power supply out of the scanner. It help keeps the scanner at a nice even temperature so that you get good consistent results. Um, means that it's also a little bit lighter and it's some, no controls on it other than a scan button, which I've never particularly used, um, and a power button. And that is it. If I open the thing up, you can see as it's set up at the moment, here's the reflective sheet. This is for reflective scanning. The scanning device just moves underneath the glass sheet here. As with all scanners like this, make sure you've got some good quality cleaning cloths, non-abrasive cleaning cloths, because dust that collects here, dust that collects in other places on your film um, holders and things like that, will potentially produce problems for you. Well, not problems, just more work in that you end up having to actually do some uh, do some cleaning of the images. Now, there's a lock in place. If you're going to transport it, there's a lock at the back. Make sure you activate that. That just locks the mechanism, stops it from sliding about in transport or anything like that. That's the setting you would use for, trans for reflective scanning. If I take this off, we can see the moving light source that's used for transparency scanning. As you can see, it covers quite a large size. You can scan 10 by 8 uh, film with this. Uh, so if you've got, if I was to re resurrect my uh, Fibre 4 uh, MPP camera here, put some film in the back of it, I could scan it in this and it's pretty good resolution. All the specs and everything, they're all in the written article. As I put links to the written article, but if you want technical details, look there because it's the sort of stuff I cover. It's much easier to cover in a written article than me just read out lists of specifications from tables and things like that. There we go. It's a basic scanner. What's different about this one to your ordinary, ordinary desktop scanner? Well, you've got the light unit for starters. Um, because of the kind of scans it will do, it comes with quite a range of film holders. So here we go as a sheet uh, film holder. Now I could take sheet film out of this um, and scan it with that. There's some fiber four stuff. Uh, I can scan larger formats. There's a spacer for it. Um, there's a holder for slides. Note carefully the lettering on it, it gives you a clue as to which way up things would go. Always a problem when you're scanning film or slides, imagine you put slides in a projector, put them in the wrong way around, everything's reversed. Um, here, check the writing on it. Once you've set, once you've loaded up everything into this, there are two little holes on the scanner body here where things fit, and that just holds it in place. If I drop that into there. There we go, that's that set in there. This will hold it 
flat. There is an adjustment. Uh, there are little sliders, and this is on the uh, here's the film holder for 35 mil film. Uh, there are little adjustable sliders for lifting this off the surface for focus. Now, this was never covered properly in the manual. And if you get out of focus results, um, then you can adjust these little sliders. Uh, when I tried it originally, I never actually found much use for them. I just set them as not doing anything. Uh, but it will make a difference for if you've got thick slide holders, if they're in glass, various different things like that, depending on what size. Because you put 35mm here, you can also scan larger format slides as well. So that's for slides, that's for 35mm film, so it takes several strips of it. There is, um, and I'm not sure whether this is particularly visible in the video, there is some slightly frosted film over this, and this is an anti-Newton uh, film, so it's slightly rough and surface. So it holds your film flat while it's being scanned and hopefully doesn't produce any Newton rings. I never found a problem with it, but once again, that's something that can collect dust if you're not careful. There's the one for the five before, and there is for larger format film. So if medium format film, you want to pop it in here. Uh, as ever, there are holders that click into place hold your film in. And if you look at here, there's some instructions for loading and it even tells you, reminds you that you're, there's the ABC telling you about the text that you're gonna to have to flip it over and place it in a certain way around there. So loading it up's pretty easy. Um, it scans very easily and yeah, no problems in actually using it. So have a look in the review. I've got details of trying different types of film and stuff like that and to wind it up. One or two other bits that are worth noting about this scanner. How are you going to drive it? Well, the Epson scanner software is surprisingly good. And it comes with a scanner. Now, Epson, uh, this, this is quite an oldish device. This was first announced for Photokina in 2014, I believe. So it's been around for a few years. Hence why the software comes on a DVD. Well, actually, this is just a, a, a downloader. You go online to download the latest software. So that's not too bad. If you need, if you don't have a drive, and uh, a lot of computers these days don't have DVD drives, uh, all of mine are quite old, so they all have DVD drives, um, you can just go to Epson Software Support, put in the name V850, uh, find it, and it will go straight through to the setup, and it will install the necessary bits of software onto your machine, uh, Windows, Mac, whatever. It'll just install the latest version, and it works very well. The Epson scanner software, I say, I've got examples in the, um, in the main written review showing how you can select images and stuff. Now, I'm going to come back to this and actually do some scans in another video and look at some of the results from it. But if you want to see some of what I was able to get before, have a look in the review there. What else do you get with it? Well, the usual set of uh, what's inside destructions for it. If you get the V850 rather than the V800, you get a spare set of film holders. Why is a spare set of film holders useful? Well, one of the biggest pains in doing much film scanning is loading the film into the holders. If you've got two sets of holders, you can be loading film into one whilst another one is scanning. And it will take several minutes if you scan at the highest resolution modes to get the detail from a film. So if you're just scanning 35mm negatives um, at high res, you can do preview scans, but to actually get them at high res, it's going to take you a few minutes per negative. Um, that time can mount up, gives you time to sort out your uh, bits of film, what you want to do, and load things up into the holders there. So that's, you know, that was just using the Epson software. Two other bits of software that come with this printer, which are of use and less use. Silverfast SE8. Now, I know some people like Silverfast scanner software. Um, I wasn't greatly impressed when I first tried it. Um, I've used Hamrix, Ed Hamrick's ViewScan for years. Um, I bought it years ago. It's continually updated. It is brilliant software. Um, I found that very easy to use. With this one, it's an old version of the software. It comes on a DVD. 
you will need to actually contact Silverfast and actually request a downloadable version. You've got a serial number here, which you'll need to negotiate that. You'll need to set things up. And in fact, the original software, when I fired it up, said insert your original, your, your, your original disk for verification. Now that's not been done for years. This is showing its age on it. Now, I'm fully aware some people really like Silverfast. I just didn't. It never gelled for me. Um, you know, your choice is yours. You get it there. Just be prepared to go through a few hoops to install it. Oh, and also to get Silverfast to tell you that if you want to buy the f proper version of it, it's available and there's a discount for it. So yeah, this is free software. It works, but there's pay software if you want any more functionality. What else do you get with it? Well, I1 scanner. Guess what? Another DVD. This time we have a copy of i1 Scanner. Now this is i1 Profiler, which I use for color management, all kinds of things. Now, the problem here is that the version on this disc is pretty old. If you try and run it, it won't even run on some computers now. Um, certainly if you try to run it on a modern Mac, you're gonna have difficulties with it. Now, I loaded it up on here. The problem is when with the, mo the current version of i1 Profiler is there's no easy way of entering the serial number. So i1 Profiler expects you to have a device. It expects you to have um, an inspector photometer attached or something like that, and it goes through that. Now, there may be ways of registering this. I've asked um, X-Rite uh, as to what the current situation is with this software, but it looks potentially as this is profiling software. This allows you to create color profiles for your scanner, transmission mode, and in reflection mode. It looks like this one may be a bit tricky to use. Um, I don't know. However, more importantly, is that you get with this, you get a transmission target. That's a film target for producing color profiles. You also get a reflective target. Now these targets can be used with other software, such as ViewScan, to produce your own custom profiles. Now I found when I did custom profiles that the Epson profiles supplied and installed are pretty good. So you may not need to do this sort of stuff, but if you really want to, you can generate your own custom scanner profiles. And of course, the useful bit is this, is if you've got the software, you could use these targets to scan any other uh, device that you have. So I've used these to scan my old Perfection 1200 you know, desktop scanner. I've got another UMAX scanner here, which has a transparency hood on it, which it's ancient stuff but I can profile them if need be. They're all supported by ViewScan, which one of the reasons I particularly like the software. Um, so it's not expensive. Um, I put a link to it in the notes for this if you're curious about it. So there we have, there's the basics of a scanner. What about using a scanner? Because I get quite a few people saying, well, I'm looking for a scanner because I want to digitize my archive. Now. Like many people, I have not used film for years. However, I have a drawer full of folders like this with negatives in them. Now, this one has a rather cryptic note on it. It says Canada 3. So I'm fairly sure I remember taking these particular pictures. I can look at the negatives and I've enough experience of you in the, working in the darkroom to be able to recognize what photos they are. What you can do if you're unsure of your negatives, you can actually just run uh, the pictures here. Now, I've just done a preview scan of this sheet of negatives. Um, it's not a very good quality scan because it's through the transparent envelope, but it's enough for me to be able to see exactly which pictures they are. Now, that's for black and white mode. This is just using the Epson software. Uh, telling it that it was black and white negatives. There's some color negatives. Now, these are color negatives, so they've got the orange film base on them, but the correction has produced a good enough version of it for me to look at these and think those photos were taken sometime in 1984 or 85. I have no idea who most of the people of them are. It's uh, when I was staying at university um, and I haven't a clue what they are. Now, 
here comes the problem with if you've got lots and lots of negatives. Scanning these properly takes a while. Loading them up into the holder here. All oh, right, you've got two holders. You've got the 850. Going through the scanning, deciding what they are, doing preview scans, uh, doing sort of just you know just the equivalent of contact sheets almost. And there is no better way of curating your images from the past and deciding which ones are worth doing than having to spend time scanning. If you try slides, now um, the slides, I've got boxes of slides. There's a couple of slides here that I'll probably have a go at scanning as well that, um, that just come from a miscellaneous box that I found. I've, yes, I know what they are. At least I can see them. They're transparencies. Um, loading these up takes a long while. Now, if you've got lots and you're confident of the quality of them, you can get automated systems for doing, you know, for digitizing film. And some people would say that if you're just digitizing, uh, just scanning a few images, it may be better to set up a light box and use a macro lens and take a photograph with a high resolution camera. Certainly 40, 50 megapixels of camera will give you lots of detail. It won't give you perhaps quite the same detail as you would get from a scanner like this because this is 24 bit. We'll offer, I believe this one also offers 48 bit scanning as well. So you can get a lot more potentially from the images and where it makes a difference is if you've got over, uh, over underexposed slides, uh, film, then it's much easier to get the detail out of them with this than it is with a camera set up. However, the camera setup may be cheaper, it may be more convenient. So think of that if you're thinking about getting a, a scanner. Because an awful lot of people, as they have this idea, I've got my archive of, of images from years ago, and oh, it's about time I scanned them or something. Um, so I can just look through them quickly and realize how awful lenses were in those days or various other aspects. There are very few pictures when I look back in my archives from the 80s and 90s that I think, oh, now that's great. I think I want to make a print of it. There are a few, but um, nowhere near as many as you think. I took up for photography professionally in 2004. Um, before that, I can see I took some nice pictures but certainly uh, not the, you know, switching to digital is what made the real difference to the quality of my photography. And a lot of it comes from sheer laziness, i.e. I couldn't be bothered to print a lot of pictures here. Um, so in black and white, I used to have a dark room here, would do that. So there we go, there's that. I'm gonna do some examples. Um, hopefully this will give you an intro, but I say please do read the written review. Uh, more than any of my printer reviews, the detail is in the written stuff, not in the videos. Now I'm gonna be doing some videos looking at things like how to handle these images, sharpening, all those things that I take for granted when I'm processing digital images are not quite the same when you have film. Um, I may even have a go at producing one or two large prints just to see whether it's uh, possible to do that. But if you've got any questions, let me know. I've got this here for a while. Um, I will be sort of going through my archive and seeing what's what with it. Um, but I certainly won't be scanning all of the archive. I may do a few sheets like this of a few more of them where I can't tell what they are. But most of the ones which don't have identification on them are from my time at university. Um, and looking at it, I, I can occasionally recognize people, um, but that's a long, long while ago. Um, and I haven't seen any of these people since the 1980s. So um, I'm not particularly bothered. The ones I do see still, I want to see still, mm, yeah, whatever. But uh, as I say, your mileage may vary in that. But I hope this is of interest. If you've got, to say, got any questions, let me know. And thanks for watching. Oh, please do subscribe to the channel. And if possible, tell other people about it because uh, it seems to be growing quite nicely. Thank you.